One of my mares has developed uh, laminitis and I posted a video two days ago. Today the uh, farrier and the vet came again to install the shoes and this video is relatively short but it has some very good explanation of both the x-rays and uh, the veterinarian will also explain on the board what laminitis is. Okay, here we go. Okay, so basically this is a, a drawing of um, or a sketch of the, of the foot and this is the bone uh, inside the foot, which is the third phalanx, P3. Okay, so around P3, all around P3, we have uh, the sensitive tissue, you know? So this is horn and this is um, live tissue or uh, epidermis and this is dermis, okay? So if we were to make a small window here, you know, and we projected like a big window here, you know. Basically what we would see is something like this. This being the bone and this being the horn. Okay, so it's a lot of um, inter digitation of lamina like that. These are called primary lamina and there are very small little ones that go all around and those are called secondary lamina. And that's a very um, unique um, union or junction that allows um, the hoof to, to support the whole uh, weight of the horse in such a small structure, you know. So basically, laminitis is um, a condition where uh, some specific toxins start uh, uh, flowing in in the in the blood of the horse. You know, become part of of their irrigation system. These toxins come from uh, different uh, different uh, pathologies. You know. But basically what the laminitis is, is these toxins will get to the laminar union and will destroy it. And this very complex union uh, breaks down so there's nothing holding the bone to the hoof anymore. So the bone tends to sink. And what we will get would be something like this. a rotation which is that the distance from here to here is much less than the distance from here to here when it should be always parallel and right here you have um, the damage of the lamina and that's exactly what happened uh, with this case right here so this is the, the before and after of the chewing with a rocker shoe. Uh, basically the most important things that we wanted to do is you see the breakover which is the distance from the tip of the bone to where the uh, hoof comes out of the ground. We had five centimeters of breakover. Right now if you see the tip of the bone and the breakover, the breakover is zero. That means that the hoof would break over right underneath the tip of the bone and that releases every stress or tension on these lamina on every movement also we were able you see how uh, we have a shorter distance from the bone um, from the tip of the bone to the shoe and a much longer distance from the wings of the bone to the shoe right now because of the shape of the shoe we were able to get almost um, parallel uh, the shoe with the bone that is going to distribute the load much better and it's going to improve the irrigation underneath um, the bone also uh, we were able to maintain a rather positive um, palmar angle which is good to release to relieve uh, tension from the this deep digital flexor tendon and also which is uh, very important as well 
we were able to leave the belly or the support of the shoe right underneath the joint that will allow um, the horse to rock forward or backwards as she needs it and if she rocks a little bit forward she's gonna relieve tension from the tendon and also feel better so these uh, things that we did are what, what I call the tools that we give to the uh, hoof to grow uh, to the best of its potential without having any uh, forces against it um, so we we're, we're going to be able to have a normal growth like it's right here uh, distally so that we can recover the, the foot completely.